How's it going, RC? Great to see you again, man. Last time we talked was Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles at San Diego Comic-Con. But here we are talking about Sniper Rogue Mission. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank you. This is a happy reunion. It's great to see you. Absolutely. You're even in our intro video, so it's even better. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah, I was talking you up to everybody else. I was like, Josh downplays everything. Like, he's an expert in parkour, you know, <laughs> but he just wants to sit there and play the nerdy guy behind the computer because he doesn't want to. Thank you. <laughs> You've got me all figured out. Yeah, that's what it is, man. You know, but I will give one spoiler from the film. The puzzles and the love of puzzles is fantastic. Well, the timing of it was absolutely perfect because my wife and I probably did 50 jigsaw puzzles over the course of the pandemic. So I felt really I felt really locked in uh, when it came to that aspect of the performance. Was that your your uh, gift to the movie is like, look, my wife and I did a million million puzzles. Let's throw this into the character. Or they <laughs> they pitched it to you and were like, hey, guess what? I, w I wish I could take credit for it. No, that's all Oliver Thompson, uh, writer, director extraordinaire. But when uh, when I read it, I was like, well, I feel like I can I feel like I can capture the truth of the jigsaw obsession because I spent so much time doing them. Well, I don't want to give too much of the movie away because I want everybody to watch Sniper Rogue Mission. But this is a it's a very heavy topic in dealing with human trafficking. But there's levity in there that it doesn't feel like a French film where you're miserable for the next six weeks after having watched it. Was that a huge draw to the film of, yes, this is a heavy topic, but it still has action and comedic elements to it? Yeah, I mean, th this is Oliver Thompson filmmaking. And Oliver and I go way back. I have been a fan of his for a long time. And we've worked together and we're buddies. And he always is going to take interesting subject matter, challenging subject matter, and find ways to make it interesting, accessible, and also always have that, 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 sense, that sense of humor in it too. Um, Oliver has such great heart in all of his work and this kind of offbeat comedy that I absolutely love. What I love about your performance in this film is that it's very deadpan, straight-laced, <laughs> Yet that's where all the all the humor comes from as the straight man. And you're throwing out lines that I can only imagine were ad-libbed because if they were written, that that shows Oliver's brilliance even more. Not to take away from <laughs> Oliver, of course. Uh, no, I listen, I, I can only imagine that a fair, sh the vast majority of them were written by Oliver, but uh, he did give me some freedom to, to mess around a little bit, which is always fun. Um, and yeah, I... You know, it's interesting. So Oliver and I have worked together in the past and uh, I think he was I think he was perhaps expecting a, a kind of a more uh, warm and cuddly intelligence, Pete. Uh, and then uh, I, I showed up with something that was a little bit more deadpan and irascible. And uh, I think he, he was surprised, but hopefully not disappointed. <laughs> well, Pete's that that character. If he was a real person, you sit there and you're like, I don't like this guy, but I like this guy. There it is. They're exactly right. Well said. Yeah, that's a, that's the thing, right? Like you have to respect that he is exactly what he is and who he is, but you're not necessarily going to enjoy your time there. Well, I, I will give one mini spoiler. Uh, the orange soda debate <laughs> in the film. That has been a real conversation for multiple people, I'm sure. And it has been for myself, of course. So which is it? Is it Sunkist or Fanta? Well, I'm not going to be of any help to you because I am not a huge orange soda fan, but my favorite orange soda, I believe no longer exists, and it's called Kinley, and it's Israeli, and it is like Fanta, but better. So I'm no help here. That's because the Israelis haven't exported anything for three years. Yeah, that might be it. They locked everybody down. They're like, no, that's it. That's it. Good luck. You, know, you can't even. <laughs> if you ever get a chance to have a kinley, pays off. You know, so <laughs> you just had a kid. You said. No, I said if you ever get a chance, if you ever go to one of those soda stores that have like miles and miles of sodas, and you find a kinley, you'll enjoy it. All right, I'll give it. I'll get. I'll keep my eyes open for it. So that's the important thing. Yeah, you're Harvard educated. You go from Harvard to acting, comedic roles, video games, animation. Um, how much does your dad hate you for that with student loans and, and paying for college? 
<laughs> Great question. Um, yeah, it's definitely, I've done everything in my power to fully waste uh, an Ivy League degree. And uh, I, I think I've done a pretty good job of it. Uh, but uh, my dad, <laughs> My dad also my dad also went to Harvard, which is probably how I managed to go to Harvard. And uh, I will say he is the most supportive of all of the horrible decisions I've made over the course of my life. So I'm very lucky to have supportive parents. And the fact that he sat there and goes, well, somebody married him. So that's the important thing. Yeah, well, mostly I hear about how much my parents like my wife better than me. So, yeah. They, they just tell you that because they didn't have to change her diapers. They had to change yours. Maybe that's it. That's but Sniper, you know, we'll get back to Sniper because we got to crack, crack light because the topic is heavy with human trafficking and dealing with that. But, you know, so soda jokes, uh, human trafficking aspects of it, which is the heavy parts, jigsaw puzzles. There's so much going on in 95 minutes that it's still entertaining without being confusing or pulling us out of the film. Go, that doesn't make any sense. And when you get sucked out of a film, it, it loses its momentum. You know, with, with your performance and everybody else's, how important was it to make sure that everybody stayed locked in and was able to suspend disbelief of, yes, this is a heavy topic, but here are some really funny jokes in the moment? Yeah, I mean, I, I full hat tip to Chad and Ryan and Sayaka and uh, Jocelyn. I mean, all of them are give such great performances in the movie. And yeah, I mean, I my character does exactly one thing, but they really have to move between all of those things seamlessly between having those kind of like heartfelt, really tough discussions of serious, you know, topics uh, and then like badass action sequences and then landing the comedy. And I think all of them do such a great job. Um, so they're all unbelievably talented. And then, yeah, I think everybody trusts Oliver so much to move from tone to tone. I mean, he scored the movie himself, for God's sakes, to make sure all of those things happen seamlessly. Um, and and I really do think there's something for everybody in this movie. You know, if you're coming to see the popcorn action movie, there is plenty of awesome action sequences that are going to satisfy that fan base. But I think, you know, for example, I watched it with my wife, who maybe is not coming for the popcorn action sequences, but she laughed a ton and I think was really moved by some of those... Uh, so some of those more emotional storylines. And um, yeah, I think no matter who you are, it, it, I, I think if you're an indie movie fan, you're going to find a lot that you'll enjoy in this movie too. How much more fun is it when you get to make an indie action comedy in this regard than say, you know, something a little bit more bigger budget where, you know, you know what, this is great, but we need to add a dog in the movie or we need to make sure there's like a mermaid for some reason or whatever that doesn't necessarily fit the plot, but they just got to shoehorn it in because some executive goes, you know what? I like that idea. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, I, I, from what I understand, Oliver and Bay, our producer and director had a tremendous amount of freedom to really make this their own. And, and Oliver has such a distinctive style and point of view and does such incredible things with, with a camera in hand. Um, along with our our DP, our wonderful DP, um, that yeah, it just felt really unique and special to be doing something that is that is so distinctly his his brand of independent action comedy and like emotional drama. It's just all of those things, um, and I think he just does such a great job with it. And I can't speak from too much experience because my phone doesn't usually ring, you know, for the next Born movie or Mission Impossible, but. Uh, getting to do this is, is just pure fun. Well, this is the ninth installment in the franchise. And I had joked with Ryan that Vin Diesel wanted to make Fast 10 a musical. Do you guys want to beat him to the punch and turn it into a movie musical? <laughs> if anyone can do it, Oliver Thompson can do it. Um, he has he has not only the, the directing and the writing chops, he has the music chops. So I'm all for it. Listen, I, I was a I'm a I was a big musical theater geek so i'm in well you are the parkour expert so we can't see you dancing around with a laptop at some point just <laughs> hacking some system somewhere the, oh man i like a hacking ballet i think that's a great I a great idea so long as i get to be an extra in that scene then i'm happy like it's the icing on the cake for everything done sold
You know, and Oliver's like, where the hell did this guy come from? And what's the nonsense he's pitching my act? <laughs> yeah. This movie comes out uh, on home video and VOD August 16th. That's a Tuesday coming up real quick. Tuesdays are the, the home entertainment release and music releases. What is so magical about wanting to sit home on a Tuesday afternoon and pop in a movie like Snipers? Listen, those midweek blues are real. You know, sometimes once the weekend's over and you've just got so much, so much work week left ahead of you, what you need is a little Sniper 9. And, uh, and I, I think it gets you through the hump day and uh, helps you on to your, towards your weekend. That's it. You just need a little something. Josh Brenner, thank you so much for your time. It's always a pleasure chatting with you. Sniper, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Sniper Rogue Mission is available on Home Entertainment Tuesday, August 16th. You're going to laugh. You're going to want to enjoy the action. And you're going to be thrilled that the bad guys are actually bad guys. And especially with a story like this one. RC, thanks so much, man. It's always a pleasure.